We start today with Michael Kyle taunting his family and asking them to guess what he has tickets to. Junior guesses the vagina monologues, but Michael asks, why would he want to see one of them talk? Already the show has dated itself. In the year of our Lord, 2023, the vagina can now speak English, Spanish, French. This is a good time for me to let a hot take off. Damon Wayans is the funniest Wayans by far. Jay guesses the Barishnikov tickets he promised her, and he says, of course not. It's some courtside tickets to see a rookie LeBron James play his first game in Madison Square Garden. Jay isn't supportive at all, so she shades him and says she hopes he doesn't get the flu. This causes him to go into full March 2020 mode and starts taping up the seals of his windows. Luckily, he had a bunch of duct tape from the last anthrax scare. Michael Kyle begins to meet Ryan LeBron, and it's so good that LeBron became one of the greatest hoopers ever because this episode about Harold Miner wouldn't hit the same. A pizza guy comes by, and Michael is so paranoid that he just tells him to keep the $30 change and leave the pizza. Jay says, that's ridiculous. Give me a dub back. Right at that moment, the pizza guy coughs in Jay's face without covering his mouth whatsoever, and that's really how a lot of y'all was acting pre-COVID. They're laying in bed and Jay begins to develop a cough. Michael for once is not a paranoid weirdo. Jay low-key even admits she did it because she was salty about Brishnikov. Michael logically locks her in the bathroom and forcibly quarantines her. She starts breaking down the door so he lets her out and runs off like Skeletor. He's unlawfully detaining his wife of years to see an 18-year-old LeBron James, which is a whole new wave of pole jockeying. The next day, Claire and Katie are taking care of their sickly mother. Claire lovingly squeezes her mother some orange juice and Jay is still mad, so she rejects it and says it tastes weird, so she just might have COVID-04. Claire and Katie, being the geniuses they are, decide to take a quick taste right off of a sick person's glass. Katie even grabs all of Jay's nasty ass tissues directly by the inside of the trash can. Michael is downstairs having dreams of trying to bag LeBron. He thinks if he plays hard to get, LeBron will just have to go right up to him. Katie barges in looking like a highlighter talking about she's sick. Michael is not playing that whatsoever so he tells her to take her funky ass oxygen and take it right back upstairs. She wants a hug so he has to hold her off with his foot. Claire walks in about five minutes later with the same damn thing. He runs in on Junior with a pile full of tissues and he's either being dumb or he's criminally horny. Turns out he's counting all the tissues for some reason. He even rubs whatever's in the tissue into his eyes and nose and I'm still not 100% sure what's inside those tissues. Michael just storms out in disgust. Junior must have turned into a concupiscence count because now Michael has garlic around his neck. Franklin Aliusha's Mumford walks in wearing a full CDC spacesuit to care for his baby girl Katie. That's real love right there. Franklin tells Michael that he most likely already got it so he better start counting his blessings. Michael tells him that he has tickets to see LeBron so miss him with that bull. They give him some nicknames LeBron should probably adopt. The Einstein of the parquet, the Stephen Hawking's of hoops, whatever that means. Franklin asks when he gets sick can he go see LeBron in his place. Michael says he won't get sick because Franklin's gonna help him. Franklin proceeds to give him some dehydrated panda penis. I'm not even making a joke right now. Apparently it boosts your immune system. I'm not gonna Google that. I'm taking Franklin's word on this. Michael goes from riding LeBron's meat to eating dick in five minutes of screen time. Potentially a new record. Franklin then gives him some yak scat, which where is he sourcing these materials? And was he gonna give this to Katie? He then just recommends chicken noodle soup and a hazmat suit, so he's not helping. Michael, being the questionable quality of husband he is, tosses Jay a cup and some oranges, and he's gonna go play in his man cave, Michael Land. Jay's still hating and doesn't support him, so she's still trying to get him sick. Katie starts dying, so Jay forces Michael to take her to the hospital. He tries to just drop her off in the waiting room and just give her a cell phone. He'd never seen, you know, Dateline or anything. She talks about she's scared. What a baby. The doctor comes out in literally 30 seconds and greets him himself with which they don't have nurses or receptions at this hospital. The doctor tells him to get a flu shot and he says he has dry panda dingus, so he's good. The doctor then has no idea how to sneeze either and sneezes directly into his hand and touches the door, which Michael touches two seconds later. It always be the ones you're not expecting. Brishnikov apparently sprained his ankle, so it turns out that Michael and Jay actually didn't miss his last performance. Michael got him tickets, so Jay's not as upset now. 
He's about to go down to the hotel to meet LeBron, and Jay starts calling him a groupie. Very accurate. He starts acting tough in person, but when he gets on TV, he's acting like Blackstreet's back. He then decides to sneeze directly in his hand right before shaking LeBron's. Then he goes out and sits directly connected to all these people courtside. They all must have dough, though, if they're sitting courtside, so it's fine. They got sick time. Over the PA system, they announce. LeBron James cannot play today because he has a sudden case of the flu. The camera people must moonlight as Maury camera dudes because they play the replay of Michael giving LeBron the flu on the Jumbotron. Talk about a sports center not top 10. They all boo him and throw stuff at him. Knicks fans are booing the man that made their team's job of winning easier. Real Knicks behavior. 